What is the secondary transmission rate of SARS-CoV-2 virus in schools? That will be the question we're answering today based on older data, but this is based on publication that just came out that I thought it was interesting. And that's how science normally works. You get information that is usually oftentimes at least one years old by the time it gets published just because of the complexity of going through the peer review process. All right, my name is Dr. Miklarashik of Merit Genomics. Let's get started. So what happened here? So what are we talking about secondary rate? We're talking about people who come to school who are already infectious and were capable of infecting others. So what were the likelihood of then infecting others? And the final conclusion here, generic conclusion is that it was uncommon. So those who were infected and brought infection to school, it was not that common that they were able to infect others, okay? Let's unpack this in detail. So this data comes from US. It comes from 10 Massachusetts school districts in the US. And it was divided into two school periods. So first was, uh, I believe it was fall 2020 and spring 2021. That was the first study period that was being analyzed. That involved um, somewhere around 70 schools and over 33 thousand students and all of the staff as well and the second period uh, study period was fall of 2021 and that included um, half of those schools school numbers so 34 schools and about 18,000 students plus um, plus uh, all of the staff as well okay so this is basically what they were finding in the first study period so fall of 2020 spring of 2021 the secondary attack rate or basically how likely you were infecting others once you brought it to school is 2.2 percent oh yeah let's define this so index index case are the people who are infected so those are the people who were who are bringing the infection to school so how do you define that it that was defined by anyone who was in an infectious period 48 hours prior to exhibiting symptoms or 48 hours prior to testing positive for, for a test. So all of these people were being contact, contact, um, tra contact tracing was used to determine who was infecting who. And then, so that was the index cases. And then there's contact cases. And those are contact cases were defined as individuals who were exposed at least 15 minutes to the index case. So at least cumulative 15 minutes, so not, an, not at a single given time, but in, in cumulative 15 minutes of time exposed to the person who was infected and infected in that, and in that infectious period. All right, so, so uh, with 2.2%, what, what are we getting? This wasn't very clear to me at all, and I tried to figure this out, but really what the authors were, were talking about is this. In that school year of, of uh, fall 2020 and spring 2021, there was 435 index cases. So 435 students who were infected and were basically expo exposed to other students. In total, they were exposed to about and out of the, those 435, what I thought was really interesting is that about 150 of those individuals were actually staff and about 200 were students. The rest were, was undefined. So what's interesting is that in that school period, big bulk, not majority, but very close to almost half of all of the infections that were brought to schools and exposing everyone came from staff itself, some from adults, not the kids themselves. And, uh, and that led to exposure to approximately, this from memory, about 1,700 individuals. And that included, um, that included um, somewhere between 100 to 200 staff and the rest were students, okay? And out of all of that, this is how I understand the, this study paper. It, that resulted in 2.2% of those exposed contacts being infected, all right? But where, where one information that I was not able to find, and I was not looking at supplementary information for this, it was 
how many people were staff versus kids who got infected. I thought that would have been actually interesting just because of the fact that so much of the infection was brought by adults in there. Now, in terms of um, what were the elements that resulted in, in enhanced infection versus not, masking helped to reduce the likelihood of infection as well. And so did vaccination, but vaccination was not available to a majority of people at all yet at that, at that study period. Now let's move, back, move, move on to the next study period, which was just included the fall of 2021. And the infection, secondary infection rate. So how likely were you were able to infect others when you brought an infection to school? That increased slightly, but it was still quite uncommon. It was about 2.8%, okay? So 2.8%, that was um, fewer, index, fewer index cases than before. Uh, total, total contacts were about 1,800, and that included about uh, under 1,800, and that included only about 40 staff and um, somewhere around 1,600 to 1,700 students. So this time around, um, you can see that actually students were participating more, but unlike the previous uh, previous version, previous version was um, previous school year was characterized by the alpha variant and the original variant. In this case, you were the students were exposed to the delta variant. Now, the delta variant is was much more infectious, much more dangerous, in fact, and this might explain potentially why more of the students were being affected and impacted, and why kids were being um, more likely to now spread the infection amongst each other. Now, also, I should mention that uh, who, who did it include? Um, of all the students that included everyone from kindergarten to grade 12 students in, in, this, ana in this analysis. So uh, what was interesting though is that in this secondary period it was the vaccination status that really had an impact in terms of protection and that actually makes sense of course because Delta variant came out post mass vaccination and as you can recall, Delta variant was quite dangerous. And of course, vaccination, which was still offering neutralizing antibodies who, for those who were, who, for those who were um, vaccinated before Omicron came out. Uh, this is one of the reasons why uh, this study did not look at Omicron at all. And Omicron, in fact, came out right after, after in the spring, of 2022 and uh, at that point um, the authorities in Massachusetts stopped requiring a contract con um, contact tracing so this data does not exist as to what might have happened during the Omicron variant so we don't have that information available and cannot be determined how likely um, secondary infection could have come from Omicron variant at all but uh, that's why vaccination was so powerful in being able to protect uh, from a secondary infection more so than masking and the authors were commenting that this is interesting in that if vaccination is not available or if vaccine effectiveness wanes or disappears like what happened with the omicron then masking might be the best way to protect at that point as opposed to if uh, you have vaccines that are working then vaccines might be the best way to, to protect from the secondary infection. Now, the most surprising and interesting result in this publication was, that I thought was the fact that was that uh, the biggest factor, because the vaccines were help in protecting in both periods as well, but the uh, biggest factor, the influencing factor in both of these time periods was social vulnerability index so these authors also looked at that effect as well and they did determine social vulnerability index they were measuring multiple different levels of that so they were looking at socioeconomic status they were looking at um, um, household um, characteristics so that includes whether single parenting was involved age of parenting etc um, disability or, or um, 
English proficiency uh, of the students, uh, etc., and also um, housing conditions and transport as well. Uh, and the last one I think they were looking at was um, um, minority status. And basically, social value index was the, the factor that was most likely associated with the likelihood of, of being infected by the index case. So the person who brought the infection to school, whether you were infected or not, truly determ was determined the most by that social value index. So this is really important finding potentially. And the reason why is because the outer state is that oh, yeah. when we're dealing with the pandemic, perhaps we really should be, we should be using our resources in such a way so that, so that um, we protect the, the individuals who are vulnerable the most because it appears that they are most likely to maybe suffer negative consequences of uh, COVID-19 uh, from secondary attack. And uh, as far as uh, they were mentioning, the authors mentioning, they believe this was their, their study was the first of its kind to be able to expose that actual, uh, um, that correlation. So I thought that was very important to, to mention. All right, that's all I have for you right now. So I mentioned, as always, thank you for your support. Please subscribe to the channel. Please share the video. Please leave, uh, leave a comment. Um, please, um, Check out our Patreon account as well, and um, as well as we have a new Substack account as well. You can support us through those means as well. And I look forward to next installment, bringing more science to you. And as always, get outdoors, get outside, and enjoy the sun. Bye, everyone.